Cool. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Alex. Hello, hi. Fabio. Fabio, hi. Hey, nice to have you here. It's, uh, it's really exciting to have a, another session today here, right? So with Avalok, we go back into the financial industry and also back to the banking space. Uh, but uh, Avalok is, again, a company providing banking software for and services are for the customers, right? So a lot of banks worldwide are using or are based on the Avalok banking suite. And yeah, and Avalok is also building own products using Flowable underneath. And that's what Daniel and Alex are going to show us today. In practice, two products of Avalok are powered by Flowable. So the Avalok CLM solution, which is represented today here by Alex, uh, as business analyst uh, supporting the solution there, which is built on top of the Avalok banking platform, providing workflows for the customers. And then we also have the Avalok Engage solution, uh, which uh, represented here by the product owner of the Avalok Engage solution, Daniel. Uh, yeah, and Engage connects banking customer with their bank bank context at the end, right? So, so I'm really excited to see what you guys gonna show us. I think uh, we're really excited. So over to you, Daniel and Alex. Thank you very much for that, Fabio. Before getting started, let me just quickly tell you about what you can expect in the following 40 minutes. And Daniel, he will start by introducing Avalok and our products. Thereafter, we jump into the first product demo of client lifecycle management followed by the second product demo of the Product Engage app. Thereafter, some key takeaways before ending this session with a Q&A. So Daniel, would you like to tell us a bit about Avalok? Sure, we'll do that. Thank you, Alex, and thank you, Fabio, also for having us. Welcome from my side. So uh, yeah, let's maybe just spend a little bit of time to uh, talk about what Avalok does. Our mission is to uh, democratize wealth management and how we do that. You see in a very short overview here on this slide, uh, we, we use different technologies to build a stack of products uh, with which we can run whole banks and uh, wealth managers. There are different ways of deploying. Uh, we have the, uh, the, the normal model, uh, the, uh, the older model of having on-premise installations where our clients are responsible for the installation themselves. But in the meantime, we also support the, uh, the hosting on a private or on a public cloud. Uh, what you can also see here is that we offer quite a few of what, quite a few, few things that are necessary in the back office of a bank as a service. And we have a pretty high uh, straight through processing rate there uh, so those are all things uh, that we offer at Avalok. But now let's maybe uh, focus a bit on the on the product world. You can see here the four product lines that we have. Let's maybe start with the core one. This is what we started with and something that already exists since quite a while, years, uh, almost decades. Uh, it's the uh, Avalok core and it's a core banking system. We basically cover almost all use cases that you could imagine uh, for a bank, for a wealth manager, from the back office all the way to the front office. Uh, we only started after building this one big suite for, uh, for banks, we, we started venturing into uh, other products. And uh, what you can see here are uh, some other product lines, uh, for example, the inside product line, which basically consumes, transforms, reports, analyzes the data that we uh, gather while using the core. And in the meantime, also other products. You can see we have a wealth product line with some uh, standalone digital products, uh, which are more dedicated to certain use cases. Uh, for example, uh, we have an investment management tool. And then at the very top, you see the engaged product line that is mostly focused on the end client of a bank and, and not too much on bank employees anymore, uh, with one little exception that we will talk about afterwards, which is the Engage app. But uh, first, I think we want to do a little bit of a deep dive in the wealth product line, and then would like to hand over to Alex. He can show us a little bit about the CLM. Yes, thank you very much, Daniel. CLM so to speak, client lifecycle management. And onboarding a new client at the bank is oftentimes a very time-consuming 
uh, activity for the bank with many different complex compliance processes involving different departments. Oftentimes, this is also a negative experience for the client, an experience I'm sure that many of you have already had. And this is, of course, not a good way to start a client relationship. This is something that we help to simplify in CLM, which improves the efficiency and the customer experience of bank processes at all stages of the client relationship, starting with prospecting to onboarding and updating to closing. It has an Angular material-based graphical user interface and is fully integrated with Avalox core banking system, where existing data and rules do not have to be replicated in CLM. And all of this is orchestrated by Flowable. Flowable work plays a key role in our offering in two major ways. First, through low-code modeling, which bridges the gap between the business requirements and the technical implementation. What do we mean by that? Well, to give you an example, I am more of a business-oriented business analyst, but still I am able to do a lot of the modeling myself without having to involve any developers. As you can imagine, this enables us to quickly try out new ideas. Secondly, it enables us to offer a standardized product um, with low maintenance and migration costs as results, but still a standardized product that fulfills the specific requirements of the bank. We do this by providing the banks flowable model references which they then can configure and they will have the changes automatically applied in the graphical user interface. And now I would like to show you how CLM actually looks like. So we will jump into a quick demo. Yes, let me just. So we will follow a very simplified onboarding scenario, oftentimes or in the reality, this would uh, be a lot more complex and um, you have to complete a lot more tasks. But let's imagine that Samuel Holliger, he walks into the bank and he wants to become a client. We are the relationship manager for onboarding uh, that are responsible for onboarding Samuel. We therefore start the new client process and the new client process we have built using a flowable process model and not a case model because here we do not want to offer any flexibility. In order to um, initiate this creation of a new client, a specific set of tasks needs to be completed in a specific sequence. And in our case here, we must first select the person type and depending on our selection, we will then be taken to the relevant data and perform. So we select natural person and we then arrive at this form. We will now fill out some basic information about Samuel, starting with language, first name, last name, date of birth, gender, country of birth, nationality, as well as address. And while we have Samuel in front of us here at the bank, it is also a good opportunity for us to ask him whether he would like to stay in contact over his favorite messaging app. If so, which one is his favorite messaging app? and what is his identity there. This will allow us to stay in contact with Samuel over the Engage app, which Daniel will show to you later. So now we have left the, the first data entry form, and as we are waiting to arrive at the next page, the data is being sent to the core banking system. And in return, we will receive results from different business rule calculations, and these rules are checking for things like that Samuel is not already a client at the bank, that he is suitable to become a client. The rules are also checking for uh, any missing data or, or some mistakes in the data. And now we arrive to this overview page with shortcuts. These different tasks are shortcuts. Um, and here we arrive in a case model and not a process model because here we want to offer as much flexibility as possible due to the unpredictable feedback that we have now received from the core banking system. We can also see that we are not able to send the case to another department in the bank. 
And that is because we first must react to this feedback. We must, we must uh, complete these tasks before we are able to send this case any further in the bank. So that is what we will do now. We will uh, follow the feedback provided by the core backing system and eventually send the case to our uh, colleagues in the back office department. So we start by filling out some information about who was the one to initiate the, the relationship, us or Samuel, followed by a world check, checking uh, and ensuring that Samuel does not appear on any sanction lists, for example. We can also see here to the left in this side navigation that Flowable is giving us some hints on where we have something to do, this uh, red marking here. We then fill out a reference currency for Samuel. And lastly, adding a driver license. And as we are sending these transactions to the core banking system, Flowable receives the latest data state and reacts accordingly. Now, it seems to be the case that we have no further outstanding tasks. We should therefore be able to send the case to our colleagues in the back office department. We have a last look at the most important data and we click send. Now I would like to show you how this looks like in the underlying flowable process and case models. So we started in this process model where we got to select the person type and since we selected natural person, we were then taken to this data entry form. And for designing these forms, we also use Flowable for that. And this is how this form uh, looks like. We were then transitioned to this case model. And these tasks, they are organized in different stages and each stage resemble a department in the bank. So in our case, we arrived to the front office stage. And in this event listener here, a condition had to become true in order for us to send the case to our colleagues in the back office department. That is all that I wanted to show to you. I hope it gave you some insight into how we use Flowable for client lifecycle management in Avalok. Um, as said, any questions? We can uh, answer them in the q and I will now hand over the stage to Daniel, as well as our new client, Samuel. Great. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Alex, for your hard work. Uh, thanks to what you have already done. We can now uh, do business with Samuel. And of course, we can also already contact him through the Engage app, which is what we would like to focus on now. Uh, before I'm going to show you the app, Maybe just a few words about what it is. Uh, we actually already heard it today in um, uh, some of the, the previous presentations uh, of this flow fest. Uh, everybody has a phone, obviously, everybody uses them. Everybody has a social messaging app. Uh, we take WhatsApp as an example, but uh, it could also be a different one. And uh, of course, it is also something that is being used between a bank uh, advisor and, um, and their clients. Uh, the problem now, among others, uh, is that we don't really have these records as a bank anymore if an advisor uses the private account, for example, WhatsApp account. Yeah. So what we did here is we created an app for the advisor of the bank to use to communicate with their clients over the client's favorite channel. So you can see on the right side, we're in a secured bank environment. Uh, the advisor or the RM, as we sometimes call them, relationship manager, uh, they use this app and they communicate with Samuel, uh, who is on the left side here in the public environment using the normal, already well-known WhatsApp app, as you can see here. Uh, we have a security. We have the security measures uh, in place that are needed for everything to be um, safe and sound. Uh, now, of course, we don't only just want and expect advisors to use our app because uh, otherwise it is not compliant for the bank. 
Uh, there should be other good reasons to do so. So we offer all kinds of goodies, uh, nice functionality that should uh, make the life of an advisor easier. And uh, yeah, that's something that I'm going to show you right afterwards. Maybe uh, a few words about where Flowbill comes into play. Um, so again, here on the right side, you see the, the safe environment of the bank. On the left side, you see the open environment the uh, publicly accessible internet. I'm not gonna go into all details of what you see here, uh, but what I would like to focus on is actually the Engage app backend that we built here, um, which communicates with the Engage app and the Flowable Engage part that is part of our backend here. Yeah, So we, we use Flowable Engage in our Engage app to take care of all things that have to do with the actual messaging as yeah, the integration of the messaging channels also the data modeling of uh, of the conversations and other things uh, so that we can be sure that this is being done in a compliant way and we can focus on our core competencies which is of course then the the banking world and the use cases that come from banking uh, maybe also important to mention here is that flowable uh, follows a multi-channel approach so for us it doesn't really matter which channel uh, we're using it is almost always more or less the same for for us to implement uh, we can basically say that we would like another channel flowable can then uh, provide us with the adapter and uh, it is something that we can implement in not a lot of time so that we also serve our clients or the clients of the banks uh, through that channel yeah, so maybe now is a good moment to switch over. I would like to show you what this app looks like. Here you see it. It is a phone app. Uh, we also have a web UI, but uh, we, we started with the phone app. And this is what you see here. I'm going to log in with my user. And... Maybe first we can just focus on the on the tabs that you see uh, in the in the bottom. Uh, there are uh, four tabs. Let's start with the clients one. This is basically an overview of all the clients that I am able to see that I am allowed to see as an advisor of the bank. I can scroll around here a little bit. And uh, thanks to you, Alex, we already find Samuel here as well. If I tap on him. Uh, we can see a few things that are quite uh, handy if I'm on the way and about to meet Sam, right? I can check what my open tasks are with regard to him. Um, I don't have any events right now, but uh, soon I will probably have some. Uh, there is the personal info that I can look at. That's uh, all the stuff that Alex just keyed in uh, that we saw earlier. And I can even look at his financials here, uh, which is quite nice. So actually this is information that we get from the core banking system it doesn't have to be ours but of course it's easy if uh, we do it with Avalok core uh, we obtain the portfolios we can even look into a little more detail and see how the portfolio uh, evolved over time yeah all data that we basically have in the in the palm of our hand um yeah let's maybe go out and just look at this new section uh, we we have the possibility to feed all kinds of information that we then want our advisors to share with their clients uh, it could be news like you see here uh, but it could also be uh, for example product prospectus or whatever else you could imagine that you would like as a, a part of this content management system um, now this is the uh, home view basically the the overview I'm not going to go into all details here. Uh, you have a, just an overview of all functionality, but what we would like to look at now are these uh, conversations that you see here at the top, and we can scroll back and forth. And uh, this is basically what I would like to focus on. If we tap on Sam and we pull down the messages, uh, you can see we have already uh, been discussing a little bit here. And uh, while I can't really show flowable uh, like we did uh, before, uh, flowable engage is is actually uh, what what orchestrates all of this in the background yeah so the messages coming in going out uh, the 
the modeling of uh, how a conversation is set up and who can see it and so on. This is, uh, this is all being done by Flowable. So what you see here would basically not be possible without Flowable Engage. Um, so now maybe I can show you just a few examples of what I meant when I said that we also want to offer a few goodies to, to our user. Um, it's a little more than goodies, actually, I would say. We have a very potent uh, NLP in the background, natural language processing model that always reads with us and tries to understand what the intent is behind messages that are uh, received here through the Engage app. Uh, I'm going to give you a little example for that. We're going to receive a message from Sam. And uh, as soon as there is a message where the system can automatically identify a intent, we will pop up a little bubble in the, in the left bottom corner. Uh, that just happened. You can see that we have been discussing a fund. Sam is interested in uh, investing into this fund. But first, once we have all kinds of different information and prepare a bit, one thing that Sam wants here is uh, a statement of the Swiss francs trading portfolio. And uh, yeah, you could see almost at the same time that this bubble appeared, send statement at the very bottom. If I tap on that, you can see that we already pre-select the correct portfolio because the language model extracted which portfolio we were actually discussing so that I can just choose a date range here for the statement and then I can send the statement through a so-called deep link. Uh, that is a concept uh, with which we uh, secure some more sensitive information so we don't just send it over WhatsApp. Sam can now open this link um, and just look at the information uh, in his mobile banking or in the web banking. Another example now, Sam will ask us, OK, I'm happy so far, but could you please tell me what the performance is so far on my Swiss francs portfolio uh, this year? And you will see as soon as this question pops up, we will get another bubble, another recommendation of what to do as an advisor. That's the next message that is coming in. And here we actually have also a few additional things that we can extract with the, the language model just to show you the complexity of, uh, of such a model maybe. So he says, I'm wondering what the return on this portfolio has been so far this year. So we need to understand with this model what is meant by return. That's a metric, right, that we can obtain uh, in our case uh, from, the, from the core banking system. We need to understand what this portfolio means. It is the portfolio that had already been referred to uh, earlier on. And we need to be able to parse this year. So if I tap on this recommendation, you can see we pre-select the correct portfolio again. We pre-select the correct date range here. So from 1st of January, because it's this year. And uh, then we can basically obtain this information in pretty much in real time from the core banking system. You didn't even see it, right? Uh, it's just here. And then we can send it as a message. In this case, the return is minus 1.13. Uh, let's hope that looks a little better after changing it around. And as a last example, we can maybe have Sam ask us to sell a part of a position uh, where he thinks that we uh, are already a bit high. Uh, in particular, he will want to sell a part of the IBM shares in it, just as an example. And again, you will see that the recommendation pops up right after this um, inquiry comes in here through WhatsApp, by the way, this is. So he says, please also sell the 100 IBM shares I still have in there. Uh, a few typos also. Uh, we can also deal with uh, pretty bad typos, but I didn't want you to uh, see such a message now. Um, if we tap on the send trade proposal recommendation, you can see that we pre-select the correct asset from the portfolio. Yeah, we know it is IBM. We pre-select that it is a sell and not a buy, obviously, hopefully, right? 
uh, that the number is 100. Uh, here we have to manually adjust the portfolio, no problem, we can do that. We see a bit of an overview of what this trade looks like. And then again, we can send the trade rate be verified as a deep link here. Again, we chose the deep link uh, because this is quite sensitive, right? You can imagine that uh, we probably don't want uh, Sam's little daughter to send a, a WhatsApp saying sell everything. And then uh, uh, we, we trigger that more or less automatically. So Sam can just log into his uh, e-banking or mobile app here following this link, click verify, and then this trade is through. Yeah. That's more or less what I wanted to show you here in the Engage app. Hope you got a bit of an idea what we're what we're doing and what we use Flowable for. And with that, I think I can hand back over to you, Alex. Yeah, thank you very much, Daniel. And uh, thank you for taking such good care of our new client, Samuel. So um, from the perspective of CLM, thanks to the flexibility of Flowable, banks can design their processes to fully fulfill the needs of their clients. But um, thanks to the simplicity and the low code approach of Flowable, this can be done in a standardized way and scalable way with low maintenance and migration costs as results. Yeah, and when it comes to Engage, you saw that uh, we're following a multi-channel approach here with uh, Flowable. So the complexity of the different channels is not really ours it is reduced to to one approach that we can always follow and last but not least even business processes were a little more sophisticated and in the banking area can somehow feel conversational uh, thanks to the integration of messaging with with banking functionality yeah i think that would be it from our side and then we're very happy to uh, answer your questions if there are any probably Yeah, I think we, we got a plenty of questions, <laughs> Daniel and Alex, so I think we we can focus on them. But first of all, I want to say a big thank you for you guys. I mean, uh, it was a really interesting presentation to be guided through the two different tools. Uh, it's, wow. uh, it's really two different like journeys, and I think you're, it's really nice how it all comes together and how you showed it at the beginning, right? So I think it's all it's quite nice. Um, I mean, one uh, question which we got from the chat, uh, from the audience is, um, let me take one, is for example, uh, if you add, uh, that's maybe for you, Alex, more, right? And I think as a business analyst, you you might be faced with this question quite a lot. So if you add new features to the CLM case, do you migrate also the, in, the existing instances? How does it work for, let's say, existing instances? If you have already, like, I mean, a client lifecycle management case might run for a long time, right? And there are new features or new, let's say, change requests are coming in. So how do you handle these ones? Are they only working for new created customers or are old customer lifecycle cases also migrated to the newest functionality? Well, that sits with the responsibility of the bank. Um, <clears throat> so if we integrate some new functionality, um, it is then up to the bank to decide whether this is something that they would like to have as well. And as you could see, Flowable is fully flexible and you can drag and drop and put whatever you want there. We provide the, the models as references this is best practice, basically. This is how we do it in our example integration. But then it is up to you, the bank, to, to do what you want with that, basically. Um, so it, it really depends. There's no, no straight, an, straight answer, yes or no. But it, uh, it is up to the bank to decide whether they would like to, to, to put this new uh, feature or functionality that we have implemented in our model references. Cool. Uh, then there are quite two questions which are going a bit in a similar direction as we saw like in your slide, the process model being quite large, right? I mean, this, this template. So the, how do you manage change requests and how you ensure that the process still runs? And then another question is how you test, so to say, VPMM, CMM, and DMM. Do you have like there an approach of what you're doing there? <clears throat> so starting with the testing, we... Uh... <laughs> Whenever we make changes to our, our example integration, once again, it's, it's uh, ultimately the responsibility of the bank to, to take in what they want or not. 
This is just an example that we are providing them. Um, but of course, we have automated tests that, that are running um, every day. Uh, we, we build a new environment every day with the latest features. And through these automated tests, we are able to, to, uh, to, to find out whether there has been any regression in the, in the application. And uh, Fabio, sorry, could you please repeat the, the, the first question? I mean, if there is a new change request coming in, how do we mm -hmm. ensure that still everything works? I mean, it's a bit yeah. in a similar direction, right? It's about regression, right? How you can ensure yeah, that yeah. you don't break anything, right? That's a bit the question. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, th then that would be my answer. It's uh, it's really about um, deploying a new model as often as you can. Make sure it gets out to the user. They can try it out. Uh, but to have this sort of continuous delivery, you also have to have automated tests because otherwise the, the, the effort on, on us as a business analyst or also um, the, the, uh, the functional testers becomes quite extensive. So we need those automated tests for that. Cool. Um, another question in another direction, less maybe in the uh, testing space, but more, let's say, in the implementation phase space. So if you update the client information, uh, I assume you have like the master data is in the Avalok, Avalok banking platform, right? So how do you keep Avalok and Flowable in sync? How do you make sure that, let's say, data is also coming back to Flowable, it's feed to Flowable? I mean, how do you... I mean, you update only one platform or you always expect the user to update it on both sides. So that's a bit the uh, question. <clears throat> yeah. Well, when we follow this, uh, this onboarding case, um, we always send the data back to the core banking system. And it's, it's asynchronously integrated with the core banking system, meaning that we can continue working and the core banking system is doing some, some calculations, making sure that the data is correct, and then sends this uh, feedback back to us in the CLM application. Um, so it's, it's uh, yeah, the core banking system is the master of the data. We are in CLM more an extension of that core banking system. Um, so okay. if the core banking system doesn't accept anything, then uh, CLM also have to have to uh, take that. We we cannot we don't have any two different data states, but it's all the same coming from the core banking system. And from a user perspective, I mean, how long does an onboarding take with your model? I know that it's maybe also based on the bank, right? It may it might change stuff, right? So that might that might take longer. But like, what is like more or less the average onboarding you guys let's say can achieve? Uh, it totally depends on, on what kind of client you want to onboard. Um, mm -hmm. Natural person who only wants to have one simple money account um, goes a lot faster than um, a legal person with a very complex legal structure involving many different beneficial owners and account owners. Um, but what I can say is so I'm not able to give you any specific number on, on that. It's still in the responsibility of, of the bank. Um, but what I can say is that roughly 10 years ago, I used to, to work in, in the front office of a bank. And at that time, process orchestration tools like Flowable were not widely used. And yeah, when I wanted to onboard a new client, I often had to log into to different systems with poorly designed user interfaces. I had to enter the same data multiple times. And I had to go through forms and questions that were not really relevant to, to the clients that I had in front of me. In contrast, uh, when using our CLM application, everything can be made dynamic. So as we saw in our, in our uh, example here, um, we first selected the person type, natural person in this case, which then took us to the relevant data entry form. We didn't have to go through any unnecessary mm -hmm. stuff. Um, also, you only log into one system and any other external service that you might need in the, in the onboarding process can be modeled to be called from within the application. So everything is, is integrated. And yeah, lastly, you only once you enter the data in, 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 uh, in CLM and, and in Flowable, it sits there and it can be used in, in different contexts. Um, so yeah, at the end of the day, 
how fast you onboard someone. It, it really boils down to how long does it take to get the necessary approvals and uh, how fast you are on the keyboard. Okay. <laughs> Let's give uh, Alex a rest. We also got a lot of engaged cast, uh, questions, so let's uh, focus a bit on Daniel. So um, the engage app you show, right? I mean, you show it really nice at the beginning, like together the journey of the Avalok customer. Is it also working for customers which are not Avalok customers, like which not are not using the Avalok core banking platform? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yes, the, the app is actually designed in a way so that it is, uh, I think we still call it core platform agnostic, so it doesn't really matter uh, what you use. But of course, we have a, if, if the Avalok core is used, it's quite easy, uh, quite fast, a project, because we have, a, we have an ACP adapter, is what we call it, that transforms all the data exactly the way that we need it in the Engage app. Uh, if, this can be done for, for any other uh, core banking system, but it has to be done, right? Uh, but yeah, it's it's generally possible and also the idea, yeah. Cool. And I think a question we had quite a lot of time in our things, Daniel, when we were talking, like, uh, what is the demand for the engaged technology? Do you see like customer rolling, I mean, coming the door and knocking every time or what? what is there, let's say, the, the current market uh, demand on that? Yeah, that's an interesting one. I think mm -hmm. it is rising, uh, right? Because maybe, maybe the industry is not aware so much yet of all of the the compliance problems. In some in some uh, jurisdictions, a little more than in others. If you've been following the press, right, uh, you saw that uh, in the United States there were huge fines uh, <laughs> already because of exactly this, right? So uh, because a bank let implicitly right not explicitly but because they let their advisors use personal whatsapp uh, accounts to communicate with the with their clients uh, they they that was easy to prove uh, they didn't have any mm -hmm. uh, they didn't have any data and the, i mean their the impact is really big so we more and more get the question i am not sure Maybe the product is a, a bit disruptive still for for certain banks, but we get the questions, we get an interest, um, we have some some customers, so it's uh, it's picking up speed, I would say. Yeah. Cool. Uh, maybe a question to both of you. Maybe you answer it. Maybe you Daniel first, and then Alex is. What was the biggest challenge, right? I mean, with Global. So when you when when you started this journey, what maybe you didn't expect and came up, right? I think that's also interesting for for the audience. Maybe we start with Daniel with Engage. What was the biggest challenge? You mean when we when we tried to use Flowable in our product? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Hmm. Ooh, good question. Uh... No challenges. <laughs> <laughs> There's always. <laughs> But whenever you use a third-party tool, there is uh, there are challenges, basically, right? Uh, I don't think that there were overwhelmingly large challenges. Uh, we had to get used to how things are are modeled. Uh, maybe the, the way we thought a a conversation is modeled as data, and and who can pick a conversation or participate in a conversation, we were maybe thinking about that a little differently than what was foreseen in Flowable. Uh, for, I, I can give you an example. We built something to uh, enable uh, group chats to a certain degree from the bank side so that you can, for example, onboard a specialist to help uh, mm -hmm. with a specific question or, or something like mm -hmm. that, right? And there we had to maybe work around a bit around the model, the way it has been, uh, it has been uh, designed, but uh, I wouldn't say that this was a major problem. It is a challenge, and you face challenges when you use third-party uh, tools, right? And from you, from your side, Alex, from the CLM side. <clears throat> well, I, I think it's uh, at least I can say one of the, the the biggest challenges was the the security setup, um, which is actually due to our high security standards is, is somehow always a challenge. Uh, like, like Daniel say, when you want to integrate third-party applications and yeah, making sure that Flowable runs together with all these other microservices that we are hosting in the cluster. 
Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I would say the, the security, but I don't think it's something necessarily specific to Flowable. But it's 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 always something that that uh, requires a lot of effort on our side due to the yeah a lot of the sensitive data that we are hosting in our systems. Cool. I think we got a lot of more questions, but uh, we're running out of time. So I think uh, there is a lot of interest in the Avalok solutions built with Flowable. So it's uh, it's really nice to see that that uh, customers are really asking a lot on different aspects, technically and uh, let's say more adoption driven. So it's really nice to see that. Uh, but I want to use now the opportunity to really thank you, Daniel and Alex. It was a really nice presentation again. And yeah, thank you for being here. Uh,